Good morning, we are here in the centre of Glasgow, Chongate, and we're doing a wee video on the best chippies in Glasgow. And we're about to start then the Valdoro. You can hear the music blasting from it just now. Uh, the one thing about the Valdoro is it's like a step back in time, it's got character. And to run a good chippy, you need a good character who we are going to go in and meet. Brace yourselves, he is uh, an enigma and a legend around these parts. Let's go meet Rico and his son Jan. Here he is, the man of the moment, Rico. Yeah. How you doing, Rico? You take that. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm so glad you've come to the Valdora to do your, <laughs> your podcast. Well, well, we're looking around for the best trippies in Glasgow, mate. I had to uh, start here, mate. You always want to be the best, but you never say you're the best. All you do is try and do a good job every day, then you come in, and if you know your craft, I mean, you will be, you will, you should be good at it. You know your craft, Rico. Yeah, well, it's been a long time. It's been 57 years this year, so it's a long time. Been in the family for years and years, then. Yeah, a long time. And you've got your son here, Jan. Are you coming in for a wee hello? <laughs> He's a bit shy, he's a bit shy. He's too but shy. For all the ladies out there, he's uh, very handsome. So we'll start oh, off there, with... There, like. Which song was a hit in two different centuries? Oh, in fact, we could just uh, no, answer it. We'll put that to the comments, see how many people in the comments yeah, get it. I'm sure there'll be plenty who'll get it. I think I gave him a wee clue though, eh? With we'll give him a little clue, yeah, why not? I mean, is this recording you? Yeah. It's recording me, on you go. Do you want to give us a wee... Oh, thank you. We'll the, the, the DJ, he's not a very good DJ. <laughs> Oh, here we go, he started it, here we go. Oh. Come on, big man, you've got it. You want me to start with you? I'm swaying with you. <laughs> this is tense. So let's start with X Factor. Are you ready? He's frozen. He's gone. <laughs> He's done a brown statue impersonation right now. <laughs> I've never talked to a microphone that doesn't talk back. <laughs> oh, no, how are you doing, son? With the perfect wife. Right. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Should be a bit small for me, man. <laughs> it's now <laughs> Well done. <laughs> I'm well done. There's Glasgow for you. There's Glasgow. I've forgotten the words. <laughs> Take three. Take three, right. I need to give my wee rub. Uh, yeah. Relax, relax, you're already. You've got it. You've got it in you. Come on. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Got it, got it in me. Let's go. No, no, he's no uh, good. No go. <laughs> it's getting in at the right moment here with Elvis. I should have said that, should I? No, oh, you gave away the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sto in front of you, oh, oh, mio. Sto in front of you, sto in front of you. Oh, me, me. What we're really on about in this podcast is that we want to maintain Glaswegianism, right? Kim. This is right. This so is we, right. We, we, so we want to put Glasgow's a, lost X. Yeah. Weginous. It's not lost it, but it's need, it needs to be re restored. Our Glaswegian roots. We can't allow that to, to disappear. Now I can speak. Okay, okay, so I'm from Italian background, but I was born around the corner, Moyer Street, so basically I'm an East End boy. And I know I was brought up here, so I've got an affinity, deep affinity with the place and the culture and the people. And it'd be great to get the memory banks going and try and remember all the old characters. And that's what we're shouting out to everybody in Glasgow. If you'd like to leave a comment. Yes. Uh, and put down your favorite, like. Your favorite Glasgow sayings. That's a good idea, mate. I like that. Because you love hearing them. In actual fact, I've got a few here. I'm going to read out to you. You're not allowed to look at these. All right, okay. Right. He won hee haw. <laughs> oh, that, mean, that means he won nothing. Ah, well done. <laughs> Here's another one for you, Rico. Some people say you have near a scooby. <laughs> oh, that means you've not got a clue what you're doing. Well done. Right? Oh, look at that face. Look at that glacic face on you. Oh, you've got a vacant look. Aye, you don't have a clue what's going on. Aye. 
Oh, you're getting it loudy. You're getting it loudy means you're really trying. Oh, he's trying. Or like, if you're getting it loudy, you if you're getting it loudy, you say, "Oh, go on yourself, big man." <laughs> oh, Jan saw the cameras and his face went a bit peely wally. Oh, right, peely wally. Well, that's right. He went short. He went chalk white, <laughs> chalky white. But I've got this kind of. Uh, Connection, it's, it's, people say, well, you know, have you got these connections? Well, I've got even a connection with Billy, two connections with Billy Connolly. For, believe have it or not, well, three, there's one on telly. All right. But one of them is, how's it gone, Biggin? I've been known as the Biggin for you. all these years, right? <laughs> the other thing was when we, you, in the days you could put a pound's worth of four star into the, into the motor and go all the way down to Dot Loch Lomond and those parts, aye, you know? Aye. So we went there and it was Billy, and I just fitted these Maserati air horns, you know? They were meant to be for a boat, but I'd fitted them for the old van. <laughs> and I says to the boys, the everything happened so fast. I says, that's Billy Connolly, he's talking to somebody. He's doing, he's, he's, he's on the road talking to somebody, you know? So just when we get within 20 yards of him or something, just blast him as a ratty air horn, you know? So what we did it sound like, Nico? Oh, amazing. He shot game. himself, game right? It. What was the sound? So he jumped up near and he went, you, you! <laughs> Can you imagine what he said? Aye, aye. Don't worry. He said, bring his body, bring his body down to me. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly copped my whack that day, let me tell you. <laughs> look, we've got, look, this is our live. Do you mind? We're going to watch how Rico deals with our customer, is that right? Oh, yeah. Hey, are you? Here we go, this Hold is the moment. I'm just going to roll chips. Yeah, rolling chips, no problem, right away. Rolling chips, here we go, watch. This is the man in action. Oh, I'll hold them. Called chips, chips overkill. Sounds very James Bondish, doesn't it? Chips overkill. Salt money? Yes, please. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Is he getting the adventures with Clarkie discount? <laughs> oh, 100%. <laughs> We're going, to, we're going to get shown how to fry the perfect fish here. Yeah, it's a nice bit of haddock there. <laughs> Stick it in. Rico, talk us through it, mate. Now, What's what he's doing? basically done here, he's slapped it in the batter. And then he should... And you batter it. Yep, yeah, yes. Oh, That's why it's called batter. Safe hands, Jan. No, I know you're a good one. Oh, I think it's dead. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah oh, it. but it's the way he lays it. It's got that kind of... It's, it just go, you know, Almost goes flies. in that direction. It has to. It's a j delicate flick. It's a delicate flick, exactly. Uh, so another thing about the Valdoro is you've probably maybe seen it in the news and stuff. Rico's brother Gigi, who ran the shop for many years as well. Yeah. He's uh, very famous for being the is it the the, the singing chippy? Yeah. 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 He was he was uh, he trained as a, a tenor, an operatic tenor. So. Um, so he's a bit of a, a kind of an encyclopedia and all things to do with opera. Mm -hmm. And um, an operatic tenor. So yep. you're an operatic fiver. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, he's a tenor, <laughs> I'm the fiver now. But to go back to the singing, the, the, the chap, the, the, the great, the late great Carlo Bergonzi that taught Luigi, you know, he, he was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful artist of a tenor. And so I think he was very fortunate to fall into his hands and um, do two academies with him in 1990. In 1991, you'll meet people from all over the world. That's another great thing about the Valdora. I just think it's because it's the location of this shop. We tend to meet people from all over the world. Yeah. Uh, and from all backgrounds. Well, when this video goes out, you're going to have people from all over the world watching you. Yeah. And I'm going to promise them a wee deal if they come in and let you know that they've seen you yeah. on Adventures with Clark on YouTube. Yeah. Comment down the bottom, like it, all that jazz. Yeah. You'll give them a wee, a wee extra chip or two, eh? Yeah, of course. I mean, look at that. Oh, <laughs> chips are flying. Here we go, we're going to try this fish. John, this looks incredible, mate. Oh, well, nothing better than a proper Glasgow fish and chips. John, perfect, mate. And there we have it, the perfect meal, the perfect chip shop, the perfect people, and I, I, I warned you, he's a bit of an enigma, but what a legend. Everybody, get down here, come see the chip shop, come and meet Rico first hand, you won't regret it. The Val d'Oro. This is it. No, honestly, this is...
I met her, I met her at uh, a bus stop. Uh, outside a fancy goods store in Brotherland. And I'll tell you, she's a size 18, but I like them big. And <laughs> uh, it was love at first sight. Because look, I mean, she's. she's people think she's a beanpole, but I mean. And they think she's an but she's not an anorexic. And she, by the way, never talks back. No problem. Keeps the house clean. Keeps it all. Oh, spick and span. <laughs> I love that that length, that three quarter length here. Beautiful, Beautiful. dreadlocks. She's a bit wet, mind you. <laughs> but she's just at the shore. And that's where we cut. <laughs>